corner and the pitcher hits the inside, hits the glove or, or just misses, but misses more inside than uh, it, he misses off the plate to the side he was trying to pitch to then miss back over the plate. Uh, that's a good thing. And then when the catcher calls with fastball on the outside corner and the pitcher hits the outside corner or just off the outside corner, not all back over the plate, uh, that's a good thing. And he did that pitch after pitch after pitch. He threw uh, very few uh, pitches in the in the middle of the plate uh, it, unless he was set up to throw in the middle of the plate. When he got behind uh, 2-0, and for example, he threw the ball from the middle of the plate. They used the, the sinking fastball, and, and guys hit over the, you know, looking for fastballs, didn't get the one they were thinking they would get. They got a little bit of uh, late sink, and it, it got to the bottom of the of the bats, and they they fouled him off for hitting ground balls. And he he pitched off the fastball. This is you say that's it's so important just to establish the uh, the fact that you're going to have a hard time hitting my fastball. And then the curveball was a surprise wipeout uh, for uh, strikeouts. We showed on the air last night uh, the, a number of his strikeouts as an example of how well he pitched. All of them were uh, breaking balls. It was curveball after curveball. He thought it, it gave you the impression that he threw a lot of those. He really didn't. He, he for the most part, he saved the cur- the curveball to, to finish somebody off, which is the the absolute perfect uh, way to pitch. And he was he was spot on with his fastball on either side of the plate. It was it was really a, just a it, it never got the feeling uh, that that he was ever going to be in trouble with that Toronto lineup the way he was throwing. He was in trouble one time because he he beat a guy with a fastball, broke his bat, the guy dumped, dumped a uh, double uh, down the left field line. And another guy got a base hit, the first and third. And to your point about when he first came up, that would be the time that the wheels would come off. He'd try to overthrow, he'd try to make perfect pitches, um, it, it, we'd get a walk and a walk and a double and a home run or something. And last night, they still felt like he was in, uh, he was going to be in control. And he was, he just, he came back out, uh, came back with, uh, with strikeout and, and, and ground ball, got out of the inning. And that was the last, the last threat. Uh, even though the threat was a, uh, was a, a, a weak one. Nobody really seemed to have any real good basketball. If you'd like to advertise with this program or host our live shows, you can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com, jsouhan47 at gmail.com. Uh, I do want to welcome whizkid.tech. Uh, that's the WizKids business in downtown Minneapolis, not far from where I am right now. And uh, we had, a, mount, had a, a couple of them come out to the Russo show the other night. Uh, Michael Thannert, I believe Adrian was there as well, and they brought a few people out to check out the show. We appreciate them uh, them advertising with us. And listen, they they deal with a lot of uh, you know computer stuff, Roy. You know technology stuff. I don't really understand oh, it yeah, all. I, you know, I know how to those, turn my computer computers. on. You know, <laughs> uh, but I think if I have any other problems, they can help me. They can definitely help your business. Uh, you know, they're whiz kids, a locally owned, managed IT hosted VoIP and cloud services provider uh, based in the downtown market. Uh, check out whizkid.tech, W-H-I-Z-K-I-D.tech. Uh, Michael Fanner is the CEO and owner. And uh, we've had a great time getting to know him and getting to know his company. Hello, Minnesota sports fans. This is Michael Fanner, founder and CEO of WizKids. WizKids is a Minneapolis-based, managed IT, hosted VoIP, and cloud services provider. Businesses today require fast response times, skilled support staff, clear communication, and technology recommendations that align with their business goals. At WizKids, we do this each and every day with our clients. When you call into our help desk for support or work with one of our higher-level engineers on a complex issue, you'll find our staff personable and ready to roll up their sleeves to help you solve your technology problems. Reach out to WizKids today to find out how we can help your business meet your technology goals. Visit us online at wizkids.tech. That's wizkids.tech. WizKids, make it happen. So what does the Zach Britton trade do for you? And, and, and are you excited about the fact that they're are these handful of super teams in the American league, or do you feel like that's created some weird imbalance in the league? I think it's, uh, I think it's weird imbalance, um, a little bit. I, I always thought that it was important, uh, for the Yankees and the Dodgers, uh, for example, to, um, to be 
good teams. I, I, I don't think it's it, it, baseball went through a, a, a strange time uh, it, way back when in the, um, in the late sixties and early seventies, when the Yankees were, were really bad and uh, having the, the Dodgers in the national league, not be a team to, to beat um, is, it, I, I don't think it's good. I like, I like when the, you know, when the big market teams like, like those two in the Red Sox and the Cardinals, uh, even though the Cardinals aren't a, uh, aren't a big market team per se, they, they have, a, they have a big following. They are, they, they are kind of middle America, major league baseball. I, I think those teams, those, those storied legacy teams are, it's important for the game to be, for them to be, to not, to not suck. Right. So, <laughs> but it, it, it it's, it, it's gotten it, it's gotten pretty tough now, uh, where the uh, the Yankees and the and the Red Sox are. It it just feels like everybody else in that division, for example, it's going to be a long time because they they've done a nice job of developing and trading for uh, a, 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 a roster and putting together a roster through development and then and then good trades. Uh, that are um, talented, youngish uh, players, and and it's gonna it's gonna be hard to overtake those two teams, for example, uh, in the American League East because it's they're so much better. I mean, it's not even close. And um, so it, that kind of scenario, I don't think is uh, is good for baseball. But it's um, it, it's not the Yankees and the Red Sox fault. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's necessarily a money issue. They, uh, uh, the, both of those teams have done a very good job of managing uh, the talent in their organization and making good decisions. And that, you know, obviously the money helps. They're able to, they're able to, you know, pay, you know, current stars rather than waiting for, you know, young kids to, to grow into salaries that, can no longer be affordable, but, but despite that, they've done a good job. They've been a good example of what organizations need to do. Any, uh, you, you brought out a, quite a, uh, sleeper last week when I asked about music, you got anything you want to add to the, uh, the file this week? You listen to anything interesting? <laughs> that, that was a sleeper though. It's, um, though it is a, um, a good one to, uh, a good one to add, I think to, uh, to a, a collection, but you know what I uh, I listened to it just the other day while I was uh, while I was working out. And I, 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 this is another one I listen uh, I listen to a lot. People know that I'm a big Carlos Santana fan and uh, have uh, in, in, really enjoyed his whole his whole career. Um, the uh, Abraxas Pool Group that I mentioned you know grew out of the uh, the um, Santana band. Uh, but I was listening to a live version of a, uh, of a song called Europa. A lot, a lot of, a lot of folks have done this, uh, this song. A lot of jazz people have done this song called, uh, Europa Santana in the live version of, uh, the, uh, that's a double album called Moonflower. And, uh, the song called Europa just features, I think, uh, some of the, his, his best guitar work ever. It's just, it's a wonderful melodic song he does a uh, he does a great job so i i've checked that one out uh it's called europa there's several versions out there he's done a studio version uh as well but the live version is is in my opinion the the best one so europa on the moonflower album yeah, it's funny you, you mentioned that one uh i i used to play that all the time uh you know i kind of I you guess, can't play guess, that song well, I can play it. I can't play it like Santana. I mean, I can throw a fastball. I can't throw a fastball 95 miles an hour. It was a difference. Uh, I can play the notes. I just can't make it. I just can't play it the way Santana plays it. But it's it's actually, you know, that that's one of the things about popular guitar. And unless you're looking at some, some of the wild stuff that like uh, Hendrix or Stevie Ray Vaughan plays, like a lot of stuff Jimmy Page plays, a lot of stuff Santana plays, you can play those notes. It's not, they're not impossible songs to play. It just, you can't make them sound like the greats make them sound. That's all. <laughs> it's amazing. Isn't it? What they, uh, but you know, that's the same in any, uh, any walk of life. Right. I mean, I can, I can hit some fantastic golf shots. I mean, I, right. have, I, I have really impressed myself in, in <laughs> with, uh, some of the most, uh, and, and I'll, and I'll put, I'll put them up there with any, 
any shot any any pro has ever hit. Um, I don't hit them time after time after time like those guys do. Watching the British Open was spectacular, and and uh, it's it's the same way with uh, with any with anything, isn't it? I mean, the people that are the best at what they do, you you look at that and you say, I could do that. Um, no, I can't. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I, I mean, I can play all kinds of popular music. I sit around and play riffs and, and so, my favorite songs all the time. But there, it, not only is there the gap between, you know, doing it the way they do it and the, doing it the way I do it, but there's also the fact that they wrote it. You know, they they came up right. with it. I mean, a lot of Clapton stuff <laughs> is fairly simple, but he makes it but he wrote it and he makes it sound great. Layla is not nearly as difficult as he make, as it sounds but he wrote it and then he played it in a way that grabs you. That's, that's the difference, you know? Yeah. Uh, and especially he had, he had the great, he had the great, uh, uh, vision to, um, uh, to ask uh, Greg Allman to play with him. And Greg Allman came up with that, uh, that famous opening riff. So, uh, yes. that was yes. pretty, so he was also pretty, he was also pretty smart. <laughs> yes. And I, I will make a small, well, small correction. Dwayne Allman. I'm sorry. I said. Did I say Greg? You yeah, said Greg. Yeah, and I know you know the difference. I just oh, thought I'd sorry. get it on the record. It's all right. Yep. No, we got to get we we got to get it right. I would tell you that the thing that I love about great guitarists on, on the point that you're making is is uh, just their phrasing and yep. and, and it, it, you know you can play the notes, um, but the way they they uh, put those notes uh, together and draw some out and and um, and not others and. I mean, it's, it started for me with the uh, blues guys. But BB King's one of the great, oh, one of the yeah. greatest at at that. The phrasing, I mean, that was that's it was. People talk about Frank Sinatra sing, you know, being all about the phrasing. Man, you listen to BB King and, and and these guitarists and and Santana's Moonflower is like that. I'm sure you'll agree. It's just the the phrasing that he that that occurs to him uh, to play is is uh, mind boggling. I think I saw BB King live like a dozen times. Uh, you know, especially <laughs> when I was younger, he, I just go see him every time he came through town, and uh, and I always felt for the people who didn't get it. You know, because he wasn't a shredder; he was a blues master, and there's a big difference. Yep, yep. Great stuff from Roy. Uh, enjoy Toronto for a few more hours at least, and uh, we'll see you when you get back. Thanks again to uh, Barry Coffee, barrycoffee.com, and whizkid.tech. Check them both out if you have any need for their services. We appreciate their support. Uh, thanks for listening to talknorth.com. Thanks to Roy. We'll talk to you next week.